for years everybody used to ask me, why don't you have the guys study the scriptures after you talk, then you never have to interrupt them. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I like it this way because I want you in the Word of God. And I, wanted to, I was trying to think, I asked the Lord uh, while we were off, I said, Father, why do we start a new year? I'm dealing with a lot of men right now in my life that are exceedingly busy. And because they're exceedingly busy, they all love the Lord. They have all the information. Um, I would say they, they're not just believers in Christ, but they honestly have grown and matured in a new nature. They've, so that new birth has taken place and they're growing. And yet so simply do we forget, why are we here? <laughs> What is the purpose of salvation? What is, what is it that God is doing? I mean, what is a man of God? What is, I put on there, what is the heart of effective godly leadership? Why, what happens to leadership? Do you even think you're a leader? I mean, what does it mean to lead at all? And so I think we're living in some of the greatest educational times in history. Every, and you need anything. I mean, this is no joke. I'm, I was driving my Jeep. And I hit the, the button and, and Siri's on there. And I said, Siri, what's the temperature in Pagosa Springs today? Just to see if it would tell me. It says, today in Pagosa Springs it's 15 degrees, clear and sunny. And tomorrow it's da, 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 and it starts giving me this. I thought, We're living in times like we've never had education. You have a question? I get this beautiful plaque and instantly Scott looks up on his little computer which also has an application for a phone <laughs> and, and it says it's from Spurgeon, just like that. And yet with all of our education, our homes and our community are in a mess. We have a 44% divorce rate amongst men and women of God. We have church splits. I just met a guy the other day that is part of a church split. And I'm thinking, how do we do all of this? And the tension and the addictions we have. We seem to... We talk of salvation as going to church, but no freedom from the addiction that I have. Well, whatever happened, how, you mean to tell me that, what, what am I for? What, what, is the, what takes a man to become an effective godly leader all the time wherever he's at? And it doesn't mean that he walks in perfection within the carcass he lives within. But it does mean that he lives as a man of God to where even when sin happens, there's a beautiful gift called repentance that you get to witness within the man that has no condemnation. So I thought I wanted to give you something. I, you know, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, and now you guys have been here a long time, I always give it to everybody because I want people to understand it, describes the Scripture as the breath of God. And I think that's supposed to be more than an exchange of information. I think it's supposed to be an encounter with life, and the life that it's an encounter with is eternal. When the breath of God comes into a man, and the man goes after that breath, he, he experiences eternal life. <laughs> he experiences right here, eternal life. And what do you mean? He experiences righteousness, which is the freedom from his guilt, the freedom from shame, so he's no longer embarrassed. He freed him from his, condemna his own condemnation, and once that actually takes place, he stops condemning everybody else. <laughs> he sees them in a place where they got a need. <laughs> he knows what it's like to be addicted to sin. He knows what it's like to have, I told this guy I was working with, I said, you know, men are basically, you got, these, you got addicted to porno, you got addicted to booze, addiction to to drugs and an addiction to anger. And almost every guy I meet with has something of those. That's where he's living. I'm telling you that new life in Christ you can, will set you free from your addiction. We call all these addictions, we now call them disease. The disease is sin. I was already born diseased. I was created diseased. As I was being formed in the womb, the disease was taking place. <laughs> and as it expressed itself from the time I was small, telling my parents no, I have no memory of that. My mom said I was successful at it. <laughs> I threw one fit, she told me, in front of her. And she's the one. My mom was the disciplinarian. I mean, she was a lady of ladies. I mean, she truly was a lady of ladies. If you'd have seen my mom walk into a room anywhere, 
you'd have known this is a lady. This isn't just a woman. This was a lady. But she was, a, she was not going to let her son go down a wrong road. She taught me, I, we weren't Christians, but she taught me manners. I mean, manners was a big deal. <laughs> it was yes, ma'am, no, sir. It was having dinner. I'm a little kid, and I'm sitting my mom at the table. <laughs> then when sis was old enough, I sat my sis at the table. <laughs> then I sat down. <laughs> she taught me how to set the table. She taught me where all that silverware goes. And I thought, why do we need all of this? I have hands. <laughs> she told me, get that elbow off the table. <laughs> the napkin is in your lap. When I was 13 years old, she said, now you're going to learn to dance. She sent me to a thing called cotillion, where I had to do ballroom dancing, like I wanted to do ballroom dancing <laughs> at 13. I found out it was one of the greatest things in the world. Man, it was so, all of a sudden I'm dressed in a tux, I'm 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old going to these dances in ballrooms, and I mean, it was magnificent. I mean, I could, orchestras playing, I never knew that that was going to be available. I had no idea. And even when you dance for rock and roll, you could really get it on. You know what I'm saying? That's how I met my wife. I met her in that nightclub, and we boogied. I'm telling you what, it was way fun. But I look back, and I'm thinking, with all of that, I struggled with my own sin nature. I shared with a man just the other day, I wanted a new nature. If it was possible, when I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, if God can get, start Gus Bess over again, <laughs> I would like to get a restart. Because <laughs> the struggle Gus Bess had was with Gus Bess. I really had some issues with my thinking. I look back and it says the word of God is active and it's alive. It's, it will reveal to me the thoughts, my thoughts and intentions of my heart. And I wanted that. I wanted to live in a place where I didn't have to have condemnation. I wanted to know, can you, can you get it? When I heard about a new birth, that's exactly where I wanted to go. I had to learn about faith. What is faith? Faith is living, all right? It's a living, and without it you can't please God. But what is it? It's to believe every moment of every day that God is in me. That what he said is true, that I've been given eternal life, that I've been given the nature of Christ, that I can learn to praise him in every circumstances, that when I'm short on wisdom and I'm confused, I can ask, and guess what? He will give to me generously, that I have a, every reason to praise him at every moment, that he's going to allow me to go through deep, dark valleys so that I will experience him. And in the experience of him, I become like him so that I can give him away. Because if I don't become like him, who wants to know the Jesus I know? It makes no sense to preach Christ when you still live like hell. Nobody wants to do that. They think it's going to church. So I look at this and I think, with all of these, the busyness and all the education we have, we're still such a mess. So we're, and, and the other thing we're always doing, we're always looking for a blueprint, are we not? We're all, we're looking for a blueprint. Look, you need some behavior modification. No, you need a new nature. <laughs> We're always trying to give somebody a, a self-improvement program. And many times, a lot of our counseling, which we call Christian today, is nothing more than a self-improvement on trying to help you think better. <laughs> it isn't that. You need to be transformed in the renewing of your mind. <laughs> transformed in the renewing of your mind. What do you mean? from the sinful thinking to the man of God thinking that you are because of Christ. Amen. There's no one like the Lord. And because there's no one like the Lord, there's no one like you, you were meant to shake the earth. And what Gary wrote when he wrote that song, as a man of God, that's what you need to be able to say, that's who you are. That's what I am. As a man of God, I have no condom. As a man of God, I lift my hands in praise. As a man of God, I'll go shake the gates of hell. I talked to a couple of guys the other day about that. I said, I'm looking at him, I said, I'm looking for 300 men that want to get into a fight. And the guy goes, I like that. I said, yeah, me too. I, I, want, to get a, I want to find some men that want to get into a fight for the glory of God and for the souls of men. What would you be willing to do? What, what are you? Why not go after the souls of men? They will, that is eternal. 
And wouldn't you love to be part of a, an awakening, a God awakening? Wouldn't you love to see Pastor Robles of Tascadero, Templeton, San Miguel, San Margarita, just a, a little tiny piece of the Central Coast come so alive that all the news has to come. And when those anchors pull in here, they all get saved. Because some of them really need some salvation, do they not? Okay? So I want to give this to you. Let's look at the blueprint, if you will. What I call the very blueprint of life for me. This is what I am. This is who I am. This is what I believe you guys are and many of you have become and are on the journey again. But I want to remind you, in the new year, we've never had a year like this. I don't know if we're going to live through the whole year, but we've got today. Okay? I'm not taking God for granted. I, Lord willing, this is, this is what it is. And the blueprint, I'm going to give you the blueprint. And it was Psalm 42, 1 and 2. As the deer pants for streams of water, what is it? So my soul pants for you. My soul pants for you, God. I'm not panting for a recognition. I'm not panting for a place. I'm not panting for a title. I'm not panting for wealth. I'm not panting for a, a, someone to recognize me. I'm not panting to do something. I'm panting for you. I want you. I want to know you. And when I leave this tent that I'm living in, I, wanna, I just want to be wherever you are. I'm not interested in heaven. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm interested in you and you alone. And when that, see, because you get so busy, you make all these plans in your busyness, you forget who you are. And while you're, we're going after this, I mean, you think of the beautiful, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. This is where we want to be. You remember when one of the teachers came to Christ? I gave you the scriptures, I think. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Mark. Yeah, Mark. And, and when I look at it, the teacher, his, what's the greatest commandment? Because we, I want a do list. I just got to get back into a do list. And this is a new year. Men of God, there's a time to get excited about who you are in Christ. This is our year. 2019, it just blows me away. 2019. You remember the, the millennium at 2000 when they thought airplanes were going to fall out of the sky and everything was going to hell in a handbasket? You remember that? All computers were going to crash? There was conferences everywhere about go buy a, a, make yourself a log cabin and out in the boonies, get all your food, get all your ammo, get all your guns, because you need your guns because they're going to come and steal your food. Yeah, that sounds like a man of God. <laughs> and how do you realize the people that were born in 2000, they, they didn't know that. They didn't see the newscast. They didn't experience it. They were born in 2000. They're now 19. <laughs> That's one of my granddaughters. She's at university. When I talk to her, it's like history. And then when I tell her, I was, well, Grandpa, when were you born? I was born in 1947. Woo, she thinks, well, that is old. <laughs> well, it's starting to sound that way. I remember saying about my own dad. I remember dad, he was born in 1921. And I go, man, dad, they have cars back then? I mean, I harassed him to death. I want to, I want to give this to you because I want, I want the Word of God to, to radiate this year in you that his breath is your breath that his kingdom is your kingdom but the only way that can be is if you're panting after god what could he give you greater than himself do you want a, a gift do you want an experience is there something you're looking for for proof that's greater than his presence is it sufficient to have his presence? Is it enough for you? That's, that's the man of God. Is it enough? Oh, it's enough. It's more than enough. Here's the most important one Jesus answered. Here's the greatest commandment. Hear, O Israel. And I always like that. Here he is. He chooses a people. He's going to make a people, and he knows they're going to be a rebellious people. They're not any different than a Gentile, but they're going to be his people. And he says, Hear, O Israel. Know this, that the Lord is one. The Lord your God is one. Worship the Lord. What do you mean? Go after Him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with every fiber of your being. Go after Him. Something happens in the human being when you're after God. Every experience I've ever had came from me being after God, not after an experience. I've never, and when the experience comes, they're always wonderful, but I'm not after them. I think, well, that was cool, and, but I'm still going back after God. I never keep focused on the experience. I want to know him. 
And that's what God has called you and I for. I think. So he tells us, love him. And then Tozer goes, God is a person. In the, in the depth of his mighty nature, he thinks, he wills, he enjoys, he feels, he loves, he desires, and suffers as any other person. In making himself known to us, he stays in the familiar pattern of a personality. So he says, you're my, my son, and I call him father. He knows my name. The heart of effective, deliberate uh, leadership is a deliberate longing. You, somewhere we've got to get deliberately. This, this year, let's get deliberate. Let's, I mean, let's go somewhere after God and Him alone. You know, listen to these words. The description of our lives. I am convinced. We just, got, we just did, finished Romans 8 last month. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, I'm convinced of this, that not death nor life, Neither angels, nor a demon, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither a height nor a depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus my Lord. Amen? Amen. See, there's something that gets renewed in us when that happens. Not, not to think it, not just to say it, that's me you got to know, that's me. you got to be able to say, that's me. you be able to say to your wife, that's me. Sweetheart, I may not know everything, and I may not know how to handle all the situations we're going to find ourselves in, but I want you to know this. I am a man after the heart of Almighty God. I want to know Him more than I've ever known Him. I want to experience the magnificence of His nature in me. That's why Habakkuk, when, when all the things, nothing's working right. Nothing's right. Nothing's right. I mean, nothing worked for him at all. And he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will, jo- I will be joyful in God my Savior. This is the heart of a effective leadership. This is the heart that needs to, this is what our community aches for, to be around some, look, at life. if you've got any age on you, which all of you do here, uh, because most of you, are, except for some, are full-grown men. And uh, if you've lived long enough, you've already had a heartache. You're in one. You've had one. You've had a disappointment. You had something that took the wind out of your sail. And in the midst of that, you've got to be seeking Him. You've got to know that He loves you. The heart of effective godly leadership has a life that declares, here it is. Here's how do you know. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. The Holy Spirit, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, said this, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Imitate me. If you you see me excited about the Lord, do you see me as an encourager for Christ? Imitate me. Do you see me as a man in the eternal breath? Imitate me. Do you see me in prayer? Imitate me. Do you see me crying before the Lord, weeping over those that are broken? Imitate me. Just like Christ did, it says, when he wept over Jerusalem. Oh, I want to gather you. Oh, Father, I want to gather them, and they would not come. Weep for them. Do you see me rejoicing, jumping up and down, not embarrassed at all to lift my hands before the Almighty? Imitate me. Do you see myself in my home? I'm reading the Scriptures. I, gave you, I hope you guys enjoyed that book I gave you. Was that not a cool book? I mean, was that not a cool book? That's from Rocky there, and I'm telling you what, that was one cool book. I've had so many people calling me, and and you can find your, you know where you are in that story, don't you? You know exactly where you are in that story. And I thought, God's got something for you and I. So here it is. The Scripture tells us here, there's always a warning. By their fruit, by their example, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, what do you mean? But only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not preach in your name? Did we not do miracles in your name? And did we not cast out demons in your name? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. How in the world is that possible that God could say that to anybody? I never knew you. Can you imagine the the eternal one looking at you saying, I never knew you? Because you, were, you didn't want me. You wanted something else. You didn't want me. I offered you me. I offered you me. 
That's what Christ came for. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word is God, was God, is God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the one and only of of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. There's no one like the Lord. And it's a beautiful thing to ache for Him and rejoice in Him and laugh in Him and cry in Him and weep with Him and over the sins of people around you and and then rejoice and find yourself all of a sudden one day you're the encourager. What a blessing. The heart of effective godly leadership is a deliberate longing after God that always says, imitate me. Sweetheart, I may not have it all together, and I've said this to my wife for, this year will be 49 years in May. We'll have been married 49 years. I told her the other day, I said, sweetheart, you are just getting some age on you. You know what I'm saying here? I mean, 49 years. Of course, she knows me, so she always harasses me. And, and I look at her and says, it doesn't get any better than this. Always be able to say, follow my example. I want to love you the way Christ would love you. I want to honor you the way Christ would honor you. I want to, listen, when I get out of line, and I do, and I have, I want to be with joy come to say, please forgive me, honey, I opened my mouth again. Without feeling guilty. <laughs> I want you to imitate. I want this year when you're going to, uh, we're going to pray in a minute after we sing, but I said, I want you to receive a blessing to where you will deliberately long for God and live in a place where you can say, Father, this is what I want. I want people to follow my example. I want people to see me. I want people to imitate me as I imitate you. That's the glory of Almighty God because he says, Those he predestined, he predestined to conform them to the image of the character of Christ himself. And Christ always said what? I always do that which pleases my Father. I'm here for the glory of the Almighty. So our guys are going to come up, lead us in a song, and uh, let's sing as those men after God. Amen?